essence of God. <clears throat> to accept the light and the innocence as your true nature is to feel the relief of the nightmare that has been haunting you and taking up your attention in the past. The great fear that you are doomed to live without light, that you are doomed to live and repeat the past. And finding the joy and gratitude that you no longer accept this as real, that you no longer accept the mind's lies of limitation and separation. That your willing heart accepts even though you're not aware of it yet, that you are the light of God, that you are the innocence of the universe. And in that acceptance, you truly feel the relief that you weren't right. and the great joy. Thank God you were mistaken. Thank God only love is real. Thank God there is an end to the misery that has been made in the name of separation. the willingness to accept the way home, following step by step, gathering trust, gathering patience, and gathering the happiness that you weren't right. And gratefully resting in the promises of love, the constant direction of love the constant guidance of love. Resting. Resting that the future is in the hands of God and will unfold in a new way, the way of love. in this moment, opening to the willingness that is so essential, where you willingly surrender the future 
and declare within your heart that you're willing for the future to be unlike the past. New, beautiful, harmonious, as you truly deserve. As the mind is healed of all its misperceptions, all of its ideas of separation. The dawn arrives and a new day begins. And the realization that every day, every moment is a new beginning. And that in the power of God, all things are healed. All concepts of separation disappear. And because there is no judgment in God, the realization that none of it means anything, that no one has done anything, that no one has left the heart of God. That no one has been rejected or banished from love. Everyone returns to the remembering. <coughs> and in the return of remembering, the realization It was all just a mistaken identity. <coughs> I never left. <coughs> and in the willingness of the heart, the willingness in the joy of love to serve love's remembering, for all of humanity, the realization that whoever is sanest in the moment is called to serve love. To hear the call to love from all of humanity and to answer that call with blessing, with comfort, with forgiveness, and with happiness. The happiness to see and to accept every beloved as the light of God, free, innocent, and whole. the journey of love. Perfect in every way. Everything in the journey of love showing up in its perfection and trusting that once you have put your life into the hands of God and that you have said yes I want to remember everything is divinely orchestrated for that remembering every day can be a day of healing mm -hmm. Every day can be a day of blessing. Every day can be a day of learning. 
gratefully received. Humbly accepted. Blessedly. Graced with God's love. And breathing deeply into every moment, and breathing deeply into this moment. As you breathe in a sacred breath, breathing in the yes to love and to accept love. And on the out breath, releasing all beliefs of difficulty. Breathing and allowing. And as you breathe deeply and fully, consciously bringing sacred breath through all the energy bodies, purposefully, inviting in the light, the love, the union of love. And breathing. Surrendering all the senses into the hands of God. Willing for the senses to be only used for healing. No longer being willing to have the senses owned by the ego. No longer willing for the senses to affirm separation, but willing for all the senses to see the light, to hear the song of love, to smell the divine flowers of God, to feel the blessings of every moment, and to taste Tasting the brilliance of the universe. And as you continue to breathe deeply and fully, a willingness to open the heart and breathe deeply into the heart center. Consciously bringing the heart forward, open and undefended, and affirming there is nothing to defend, nothing to protect, <coughs> nothing to fear. Trusting in the power of love. And breathe. And as you continue to breathe deeply and fully, inviting ease and peace with every breath, <coughs> affirming love, <coughs> affirming light. In this moment affirming that here in the infinite circle of love we are one. All in the divine union of love. Everyone receiving equally, brilliantly, divinely. 
and a willingness to return into the oneness, the union of love. And affirming in this moment that this sanctuary is filled with love, that nothing else exists, that this universe is all love. Accepting in this moment that there is only one presence here, it is the life force of God. Within this life force we live and move and breathe as one. One heart, one light, one divine expression of God. Accepting creation, accepting the power of being created. and joining in that power to serve love. Allow this prayer to powerfully vibrate through your heart, through the cells of your being, through every molecule, because your prayer opens the doors to receiving and remembering love, the power of your prayer. lights the way. O Father, I pray for tenderness. O Father, I pray for the love. I pray for the awareness of my inner world. I open up my heart to receive you, Father, to know the holy light, so I can see. O Father, I pray for tenderness. O Father, I pray for the love. I pray for the awareness of my inner world. The prayer of wanting to remember your inner worth. This prayer can stay in your heart. Singing all day. accepting all day that love is answering, that love is always answering. And in the stillness of the mind, in the stillness of the heart, the illumination comes, the divine grace of God is received. <coughs> I've cried a lot. 
and have regretted all that has been in the past. Now I leave everything that I have been yearning for and I'm going to go and live among the flowers. I'm going to go live among the flowers next to the Blessed Mother and with the Blessed Mother in my heart. The fears that have appeared have been a great rebellion. Let's all, beloveds, sing with love and the light of all divine beings will come and dispel these fears as they're offered up. I'm the child of the Blessed Mother. I recognize this power of love. I call the force, I call the force of God to come and open my heart. I let this prayer sing through my heart. I hold this prayer with conviction. I hold this prayer with trust and with strength and with firmness that this is what I truly want. Shudamoitu <clears throat> ilamento todo que já se passou Dejo tudo sa doça mente o viver no meu das flores Vou viver no meu das flores junto com a Virgem Maria Os terrores que aparece essa grande rebeldia Vamos todos meus irmãos, vamos cantar com amor Para Deus e a Virgem Mãe nos defender desses terrores Sou filho da Virgem Mãe, reconheces este poder Chama força, eu chama força a vir nos defender. I leave everything that has been yearned for in the past. All the yearning that has been all the pain of the past. The belief in proving, the belief in winning the belief in getting, the belief that something has been missing and that I've been left without, now all falling away. As the intention is expressed and accepted that you're willing to go live among the flowers in the heart of God with all divine beings and let go of all perceptions of conflict and to call the force of love to call on the power of love for firmness for clarification for illumination as the heart says yes and the heart is willing transformation is guaranteed. could be lifted. If you are aware if you are aware of the end of your story nothing on any page, not one of your dramas could bother you as much. 
if you knew the glorious end of your journey. At least half your attention could be lifted from anything you can now focus on that may be believed to cause you pain. His hand is like that. When it is realized near, it will always turn your gaze in the direction of more light. How simple the journey. If you are aware of the end of your story, not one of your dramas could bother you at all. The awareness at the end of your story is given to you in every sacred teaching to put your trust in that guarantee is the journey. To find that trust, to find that leap of faith, that accepts the promise of God. And the promise of every master, the promise of every teacher that so joyously offers the truth of love. But it is a most amazing realization that not one of your dramas would any longer bother you because your eye would be focused on the truth and the truth is that you're innocent the truth is that this journey is truly without distance and that you've never left the heart of God to accept that is to be lifted, to be joyous even in the journey itself. Letting your heart be filled with the promise. Letting your heart be filled filled with every sacred teaching that there can come a time when you are so filled with sacred teachings that they're like light running within, giving you strength, <clears throat> giving you a deeper trust, because you want to trust, and because that when you trust, you rest, trusting that God has not left you without. Even though the belief of separation was self-made, you still haven't done anything wrong. You just chose something that wasn't true. It was just a mistake. And because everyone in the fragmentation of the one carries the same belief, every beloved who accepts the truth and enters the divine journey of love is called to joyously let their heart bring that peace to all of humanity.
every day the opportunity of blessing and of seeing the light in every beloved. If you knew the glorious end of your journey, at least half of your attention could be lifted from anything you can now focus on that may be believed to cause you pain. If you knew the end of your journey, it's probably more likely that all of your belief in pain would disappear because you would accept gentleness. You would accept the peace and you would rest. Being guaranteed that you're already there. The end of the journey is right now. The end of the journey is the moment where the past disappears and the future isn't here and you can truly be present because you're no longer afraid of being here you're no longer afraid to be The world of judgment is the past. All judgment is about the past. It's never really here because here is all love. It pretends that it's here sometimes, but in truth, it's all the past. And every beloved must come to the realization of no longer being willing to judge the past or give it meaning, but to truly surrender it into the hands of God letting go of the story, letting go of the dramas, because you're ready to be happy, because you're ready to accept the light that you are. Love is patiently waiting. that you carry, you're not aware of. The power of your blessings, you're not aware of. You have believed in a power that was made up and that turned out to be not power at all but weakness, lack. But in any moment, you can turn toward that power of love and accept that power of love and return. No questions asked. 
You're not held at the door needing payment. You're always accepted to return to the power of love. With just one realization, I was mistaken. I was mistaken about what I thought I knew. I was mistaken about what I thought I saw. I was mistaken about what I believed I felt or perceived. And love always opens the door. Because love didn't close the door. The judgment closed the door. And it can always be let go. When any situation has been dedicated to truth and surrendered, peace is inevitable. It's guaranteed. That's how powerful your choice is. That's how powerful your divine nature is. You carry that power to transform the universe. It's not something you have to develop, but it is something that you have to accept. Of where you put your loyalty, where you put your attention, where you focus what you truly want. The ego will continue to try to seduce with evidence, with the belief in lack. But, as Hafiz says, if you knew the end of your story, nothing on any page, not one of your dramas, could bother you because you wouldn't buy it anymore. And at some point, even though now sometimes it's sometimes, but at some point, there will be such a clarity that you'll laugh at the gyrations of the ego and you'll laugh because you won't be fooled any longer. And there will be a joy within the joy will say nah, no more. I'm not I'm not believing it anymore. Only love is what I want. Honesty <clears throat> is an attribute of God that is uncovered through the spiritual journey. All judgment is self-deception. All opinions is self-deception. And in that self-deception, it destroys honesty and it shatters the trust in God just for that moment. The ego does nothing but lie. It lies about everything. 
It distorts, it lies. It's based on the lie. It's based on the belief of separation. So it begins with a lie that has no validity and yet from the moment of incarnation this false identity, this false story is all that you thought you knew. And so a new relationship with honesty in the journey of love begins to be illuminated. Mm. To be honest is to be in the moment willing to see what is running. And that if it's not peaceful and if it's not joyful and if it's not harmony, it brings you to a place of question. This can't be honesty. Whatever is running can't be held in honesty. It has to be held in self-deception. So the choice is there. The opportunity of choice is there. If this is not a thought of peace, or I am not experiencing peace, this is not of God. That is the honesty that will get stronger and stronger and stronger because you don't want anymore to keep the separation belief going. And because your loyalty to God, your loyalty to truth, your loyalty to the purpose of your journey just becomes stronger and stronger. And you're no longer in as much temptation of the familiar of the past, of the dishonesty. Judgment without self-deception is impossible. Every judgment, every opinion is a self-deception. The ego doesn't want you to see that. The ego wants to be right and to have reasoning on its side. But it truly is not in any way connected with honesty. Judgment destroys honesty and shatters the trust in God. Not permanently, but in that moment, in that moment, <coughs> your awareness of love is not available. Your peace is not available, and the recognition of the light that you are is not available. Hell has raised itself up to the belief that it's real. But in every moment, you can return to love. Every moment. And the key to returning to love is the prayer that you want to. Because when you truly want to return, all of the universe answers that call. You're not depending on your own strength anymore. Depending on your own strength is the way of the ego. Depending on the strength 
of union is the way of love. Calling in the angels of love, calling in the forces of love, I call the force, I call the force to come and open my heart. You're calling on the power of the universe that is your home, that is your reality. You join back in with the power of love in your prayers. Oh, my Father, give me strength, give me courage on this road to be a child of yours and walk the path that the Masters showed. In that prayer, your prayer is answered. Strength comes. You have to accept it. And you have to be willing to not be right. That's your participation. The willingness that you are mistaken. That you want to see in a new way. That you want to relinquish what you thought you knew. Every moment is that opportunity. This is a journey of love. This is a journey that you've waited lifetimes to come to. And no one who hears the call for love isn't surprised. Everyone is surprised at the power of that call. But everyone is also so surprised that it, it turns your life inside out and upside down. Because you thought you knew something in the past. You thought you knew what life was about. You may have even had things as you thought they were progressing, making sense of things. But all the while, in your heart, your spirit, there was longing. There was longing of being away, of being without. And in the call to love, it all starts making sense of what it was that you were searching for. Don't be afraid of the journey. If you knew the outcome, the fear would disappear. If you accept the outcome, the fear will disappear. If you really recognize the masters that have been sent to you your heart will relax because it will give you the courage and the trust that it's true. And that every beloved that has walked the way of love and has returned to love holds that for you and answers your call among the angels, among all the divine beings, whether they're seen or they're unseen, makes no difference. 
there's no different power within master who is in the body or out of the body doesn't make any difference any more than it makes any difference to you whether you are in a body or not in a body your divine truth is the same has nothing to do with your body the body that you're walking in means nothing it is the divine spirit that you are that is your life force that is your divine being that will never die that will never have loss that will never leave the heart of God. It's not possible. Not at all. Trust is the key to healing. It is what is totally lacking in the ego life. The ego life says there's nothing to trust. So you trust in your own mind, you trust in your knowing, but even that is completely shaky because everything keeps shifting and changing and can't be counted on. And, and then the insanity of the mind says, well, I better tighten up everything and get more control. But as you tighten up and get more, try to get more control, you find yourself even more fearful, more unsure. But to put your trust in love, in God, in the eternal life, is to begin the journey of resting. Of letting yourself sink into the universe. And to open to the exquisite realization that these are just words, but you are one with the entire universe. <clears throat> and these are not words. This is your existence to accept this is to sink into the heart of God but when you sink into the heart of God you can't bring your knowing with you you can't bring your identification from the world with you because it doesn't really exist and all illusions fall away they don't they can't they can't be brought they're not like suitcases that you're bringing with you they don't exist in reality they don't exist Knowing in the world, it's not a word. It's used as a word, but it's a state of mind. It's a state of mind that says, I'm in charge. And my past is what I rely on because all knowing comes from the past. It has no place else to come from. You've depended on it in what you believed was a perception of safety. You counted on it even though it never brought you to safety, even though it never allowed any resting or any peace but, like all insanity, 
everybody keeps going back to the same thing until finally you accept I keep going back to the same place but I keep getting the same the same experience of pain of suffering the ego compensates for that by giving you just enough of a payoff mm -hmm. just enough of pleasure of payoff of the belief that you have some control over something that you're right satisfaction whatever it is it's just enough it's why it's called temptation the temptation is, I'll try it again. I'll try it one more time. I'll rely on my knowing one more time. But that's when you really begin to say, I'm not going to go there again. I'm not going to play this again. And then that call for love that says show me the way show me the way that I haven't been show me the way of love lead me direct me and let me choose again the yes to love let me choose again to accept love as the authority that I want to follow. The past tried to prove to you, the ego tried to prove to you that you needed to be distrustful of all authority, that you needed to count on your own mind to make decisions. But in the journey of love, it's the realis realization that there is the authority of God that rules the universe, that is all love, peace, and harmony. And that you make that leap of faith mm -hmm. to follow. Mm -hmm. That you make that leap of faith to be directed and to be corrected. Gladly correct me. To no longer battle like a child battles, but to stand with God, to stand with the truth and to follow the way of love. To question the direction that you're walking. To question the thoughts that you allow. And ask for guidance is this helpful? Does this serve? Am I, am I allowing the truth of love to be expressed here now? Am I offering peace? Am I offering harmony? Am I offering gentleness? Am I offering forgiveness? Am I offering the exquisite grace of God? Because that's where I belong. That's where I exist. 
that when the temptation comes of comparisons, of doubt, of suspicions, of the belief of lack, that you stand in truth and refuse to accept <coughs> these lies anymore and affirm within, I'm the light of God. I'm the servant of God. I'm the instrument of God. Mm -hmm. I'm the creation of mm -hmm. God. I must follow and offer love. I must learn to offer love. And in the humility of love, I ask for direction because I don't know the way of love. Teach me. Teach me to love. Oh, teach me to open my heart to all those who come into my life, teach me the way of love. Teach me moment to moment to listen mm. for the direction of love. Letting all the blessings of love come through and expressing that love. There is no rescue in the journey of love. You can't be rescued because there's nothing really to rescue you from. And because you made your own little kingdom, your own little world, your own little identity, only you can surrender that. Only you can relinquish and turn your loyalty away from your old identity and turn toward your loyalty to God, where you truly belong, where you truly exist. Easily, easily. The ego's mind games love to constantly run. But you can say no. And you can stop listening. To no longer want to listen to lies, the ego convinces that this is blasphemous and a direct insult to your identity. <coughs> Insanity does this. Insanity twists everything around to make sense. Listen to any beloved who's standing on the street that has lost their way and is lost in the wanderings of their mind. And they will believe that they're sounding logical. They believe that they're making sense. And this is true for everyone who is in this ego identity. You can believe that it makes sense. But if it's not peace, if it's not joy, if it's not harmony, it makes no sense it's upside down and it's not real. So 
switching loyalties does not mean that you are abandoning anyone by stepping out of the insanity. When you step out of the insanity and you accept peace and harmony, you're opening the door to healing for humanity. It's the only gift you can really offer. It's the only service that there is. You could be the most sensational doctor that ever walked the earth. And it would not even touch the offering of the sanity of love, of truth, of peace, of joy. That is the only healing that there is. The rest is just biding time and being in the dream and being in a story that has progress and highs and lows and good and bad and and that's not to diminish every beloved in their journey of love but it's the recognition of the power of love the recognition that the power of love is all that there is. All that there is. Do not be mesmerized or fooled by complexities. The ego loves complexities loves things to be complex so that you think that there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There's nothing going on. And all the complexities are just about believing that it has worth and that there's something to unravel and untangle within the beliefs of the world. It's just surrendering. Complexities are always of the ego. Love is simple. Love is never complex. Mm. When something seems complex, it is because it is a mental construct that has the intention of taking your attention away from God. of hooking you into a distraction of believing that you're a great problem solver when there is only one problem. You believe you're separate from God and it doesn't matter how many different circumstances, situations, ideas you have they're all the same thing they all come from the belief that you are separate from God they're just made up stories mm -hmm. to get you to believe that everything is different that everything has a different solution or a different outcome or a different set of circumstances when it doesn't all the seeming complexities are all coming from the belief that you are separate from God. And because you're not separate from God, the solution is brilliant. <coughs> there is no problem. It's brilliant. <laughs> there is no problem. Healing can happen in that instant because you have given up all 
the strategies of thinking that there are different problems. Every day, the ego wants you to believe that there are new problems. And if you're walking along and not paying attention, the ego will pull you into focusing on the problems that you believe are real. <laughs> It'll go searching for them. <laughs> as soon as peace begins to have a deeper awareness of the moment, and the more that you settle into peace, the ego will pull you to search for a problem. Don't be fooled. It's just the past. It's just the belief of separation playing a game. There is only one perception of problem, and it is that you believe you're separate from God. And because you are not separate from God, there is no problem. That is where the joy starts to bubble. The acceptance. I'm not separate from God. So there is no problem. A new world opens. A new life opens. Because you do not anymore accept a life of problems that have been manufactured by the mind to keep affirming that you're separate from God and that you are unloved and that you are not the light of God. None of it's true. Mm -hmm. Calling the ego a liar <laughs> is honesty. If it twinges in you that this is a personal affront, that you're calling yourself a liar, then there's some recognition there that is being called to be brought to the light that you are not that false identity and that you're no longer willing to hold ownership of that identity that you're no longer willing to give your loyalty to that identity but that you're happy that it doesn't hold water, that it has no reality. It's smoke and mirrors. It doesn't mean a thing. It's a state of mind, mm -hmm. a distorted state of mind an upside-down state of mind, an untrue state of mind. Doesn't make it real. Just because you've given your loyalty to it in the past doesn't give it value. <coughs> you can heal now. You can accept love now. It is not audacious. It is not too much to accept that you are the light of God. It is who you are, what you are. And accepting it is what you're here for. It's why you incarnated, because you believed you were separate. 
and now the lie is brought to the light. And the lie disappears as it faces the light. All those shadows disappear. When you no longer give the shadows any reality, they don't exist. And you have this power. You have the power of love. As you call on the power of love, you join the power of love. As you call on the strength of love, you recognize the strength of love. Mm -hmm. As you Mm -hmm. affirm the truth of love, you rest in the power. You're not in a battle with the universe. Mm. You're not in a battle with anything. There is no battle. That's the healing, the acceptance. There is no battle. And I am not a body. I am not the slave of time. Mm. 